Hello. Uh, so we continue with uh, the theory of the firm. My name is Elias. In this unit nine, we are going to look at the cost of production. That is, given that we've now we've already looked at uh, the theory of production and uh, looking at how the inputs can be combined into the production process, we now need to look at how much those inputs will cost us or how much it will cost one to set up a firm. With that, then it means uh, we can uh, look at the cost of a production in more details from both the short run and the long run. Let's look at uh, the brief outline. So here we are first going to look at uh, the sunk costs, which will term as costs that cannot be recovered, and then we'll move to the short run and the long run cost function. And then within the same unit 9, we're going to look at uh, economies of scale, which in our previous uh, unit we looked at it though brief, but here we are now going to expand and look at the consequences on the cost as well as on the profit of the firm. We will move on to look at the supply curve of the firm and the supply for the market. So our analysis will mainly focus on the, the individual firm and then we're going to generalize to look at uh, the market in general. With uh, this and then we are going to look at the pricing, the revenue and the profit of the firm. And then out of this, we should be able to understand the uh, theory of the firm. And then we can build on to look at now the market structure in the future units. So if to uh, read more on this uh, topic, you can uh, visit Manq chapter number 13 and McConnell chapter number 8. Okay, so let's begin with uh, the cost functions. So it should be noted that uh, regardless of uh, your planning, your objective, every business incurs costs in the production process. That is, to start up a business, you need to have a budget of how many things you need to buy and how much it will cost for each of those items. And this means that every business then will have to have costs, to incur costs. And therefore, as the firm is uh, uh, pointing forward to maximizing profit subject to the given cost, we should also consider the level of output that will be produced and uh, the profit that the firm will make. Okay, so with this, we should note that some costs are recovered while others are not. In economics, costs that cannot be recovered are called sunk costs. The word is sunk cost here comes in because if you put something, say a coin in water, it will go down and then it will not come up on its own. If you throw it in a sea, it will go down and it will be difficult to bring that coin out. So sunk cost here simply means costs that cannot be recovered. Let's take an example. Suppose you want to start up a business and you want to venture into the production of soap. So in this business, you decide that before you go in, you want to understand the market better. So what you have done is that you have decided to inject some thousands of kwacha into uh, a market research, and then you want to see what are some of the things you should consider in starting such a business. For example, you may want to know who the customers, soap customers are, or who are your competitors in that market. You may also want to know what are the, co uh, the consequences and benefits of doing such a business. With this, suppose now that after doing your research, you find out that venturing in uh, soap or starting the business soap business is not a, a viable decision or a good decision it means that you will not be able to go back and get your money back because you have already invested the money into research and you have the results which are showing you that soap is not a good business for you this means this is a sunk cost you will not recover the money back you will have to forge ahead and look for other opportunities. 
So that money, that cost which you've incurred to do such an analysis is the sunk cost. Okay, so now the cost function then shows the relationship between the outlay, the factor inputs, and the payments to those factor inputs. That is, from where we are coming from in a two-factor model where we only have capital and labor, it means that the cost function will give us the relationship between the total outlay, which is the cost, and then we also have the payments going to the factor capital and the payments for the factor labor, where R is uh, the rent or the, uh, the cost for buying a unit of capital, and W is a cost for buying a unit of labor. And now if you have the total labor and the total capital, you end up having the total cost for those inputs. Let's turn our focus in, uh, to looking at the short-run uh, cost functions. Let's begin with the fixed cost. So in the short-run, a firm has some inputs that are fixed and cannot be changed while some may vary. What this means is that if you recall, in our two-factor model, we said that in the short run, capital will be fixed while labor will be assumed to be varying. With this, then, it means that uh, fixed costs are costs that in total do not change when the firm changes it, its output. Because they are fixed uh, inputs, you will not be able to change them and therefore the cost you make to those inputs will not change. Simply put, they are costs incurred in acquiring the fixed resource. In this case, the capital. A good example of a fixed costs that the firm uh, incur include the payment of the firm's plant, that is if the firm wants to set up a plant, or the rental payment if the firm is renting some of the inputs brought into the production process. It could also be the interest on the firm's debt or a portion of depreciation on equipment and buildings. Now, depreciation here simply refer to the wear and tear of the equipments and buildings and other materials that are brought into the production process. Remember that if you buy, um, uh, if uh, recall in our previous session that if you buy a machine, this machine will have uh, to work for a long time. Now, you should note that after some time, some machines may need maintenance. So they will be depreciating and therefore the part of the payments of, uh, brought to the maintenance is what we call the depreciation. In addition, the firm may also have insurance premiums to pay. All these are the fixed costs to the firm, and uh, these are costs that should be made whether the firm has produced output or not. In the short run, remember we assumed that capital is fixed. This means that RK bar is the fixed cost for the firm in a two-factor model. So this part here is part of the fixed cost that cannot change. We also have variable costs. Now, variable costs are costs that in total increase when the firm increases its output and may also decrease when the firm may decrease when the firm uh, reduce its output. This uh, simply means that we are looking at uh, a model where for the firm, every unit of output uh, being produced is at a given level. The moment the firm wants to think of, uh, think of uh, increasing the output level, it means the costs will also start increasing because the firm will have to bring in more resources to increase production. Therefore, these resources which can be varied and brought into the production are variable uh, inputs and therefore costs or payments to them is termed the variable cost. They include payments for materials, the fuel that the firm uses in the production process, or the power, which is uh, maybe the electricity that the firm uh, uses. 
because the more production, the more power will be uh, consumed and therefore the firm will have to pay uh, more for it. Or the transportation services in delivering the goods that are produced. It could be the labor that the firm is bringing into the production process or other variable resources. Anything that is varying with output is associated with the variable cost. Variable costs increase with output and therefore in the short run, our WL is the variable cost considering the two-factor model. So this part of the cost in the two-factor model, WL, is the variable cost for the firm. In the short run, total cost is the sum of the fixed cost plus the variable cost. Now we have looked at costs that are varying and costs that are not varying. So if we add them, we end up having the total cost of production. Hence, total cost is equal to fixed cost plus the variable cost. Or simply put, total cost is equal to TFC, which is total fixed cost, plus TVC, which is total variable cost. Let's take an example. Suppose the firm has fixed costs of 30,000 kwacha and variable costs of 45,000 kwacha, then our total cost, which is the sum of the fixed cost plus the variable cost, will be equal to 30,000 kwacha plus 45,000 kwacha. If you add this, you will have total cost equal 75,000 kwacha. This tells us or this shows us how the firm's costs can be added together and come up with the total cost. With this, we can and, uh, conclude or rather generalize that as the output levels change, the variable cost, this second part of the cost function will also be changing. And uh, with this, it means that the total cost will also be responding to the changes in the variable cost given the fixed cost. So the cost schedule then can also be uh, displayed where we have output starting from zero output all the way to 10 units. We notice that our fixed cost is not changing throughout the production process. But if you look at the variable cost, when output is zero, variable cost is also zero. This is because the variable cost responds to changes in output. When the firm produces one unit, to produce that one unit, there is 90 kwacha uh, incurred in the production. And when the firm produces uh, two units, there is 170 cost incurred as on variable cost meaning the total cost becomes 270. So for the total cost, we are adding the fixed cost plus the variable cost. So 100 plus 0 will give us 100, which is the total cost. For the first unit produced, it will be 100 plus 90, which will be 190 kwacha. And this is our total cost for producing one unit. And if we do the same for all units, you can check these value uh, digits and verify that you get these associated total costs. Let's look at the graphical illustration or the relationship among these costs. So we look at the relationship among total cost, fixed cost, and total variable cost. So we have the vertical and the horizontal axis, and on the vertical axis, we are putting the total cost, the fixed cost, and the variable cost. Or simply put, on the vertical axis, we are putting the costs. On the horizontal axis, we are putting the output produced or the total product. Now, this total product we are putting here is the same total product we were looking at in the previous unit. So the, we looked at the relationship among different curves in the production process, and now given the output that has been produced, what is the associated cost for producing that output? So we bring the total product on the horizontal axis. From our previous schedule, we noticed that when output produced is zero, the firm incurs a fixed cost of 100. 
it means that it is this 100 which will be uh, incurred throughout the production process because it is fixed for the firm and then in uh, in increasing output the firm will be incurring some variable costs so for the fixed cost which is not changing as output changes we have the horizontal uh, cost function which we call the total fixed cost curve for the variable cost because the firm's production is associated with the variable cost if output is zero the total variable cost will be zero because the firm will have put nothing into the production uh, to uh, start boosting the production process but the more output uh, uh, we are producing it means the firm will have to incur more costs for that production to be made possible therefore the total variable cost curve starts from the origin now you will notice that the total uh, variable cost curve will increase at a, a, a will start rising at an increasing rate, then diminish, reach some uh, angle somewhere, and then change uh, curvature. So it will be concave downward, concave, and then become concave upward. So I will explain this when we look at the relationship of these variables, uh, these uh, costs with the production. Okay. Now, since we know that total variable cost plus total fixed cost gives us the total cost, then it means that the summation of these two curves will give us the total cost curve. When output is zero, the total cost of the firm is equal to the total fixed cost. This means that our total cost curve will start at the intercept of the total fixed curve, uh, total fixed cost curve. But because the total cost curve will be changing as total variable cost is changing, it means that uh, the total cost curve will be similar to the total variable cost curve. This clearly shows that uh, the gap between the average fixed cost, I mean the average total variable cost curve and the total cost curve, this gap here is equal to the fixed cost. That is the gap from zero to the 100. It means that the gap between the two is equal to 100,000 kwachas. Given that, what we're saying is that the gap here, this distance between between total cost, uh, total cost and total variable cost is equal to the distance between the fixed cost and zero. So through and through the curve, we'll notice that these curves will not be uh, together. There'll be a gap in between, and that gap is the total fixed cost for the firm. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have questions, please send an email to moawelias at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Elias Moao so that uh, you get automated updates whenever these videos are uploaded. So I will share with you the link that you use to view the video when you have your free time. Thank you very much uh, for watching. I will see you in the next video.